<laughs> as a fan, I enjoyed the heck out of it. I, I thought they did a wonderful job of translating Marvel Comics Thor mm -hmm. to the screen. Uh, I, I've enjoyed all the Marvel movies, just to kind of jump ahead a little bit, because they, they do a good job of capturing the the uniqueness and the likability factor of that character. And they've, they've been doing a great job with the casting, they've been doing a great job with with capturing that the the element that makes it unique from other characters. And and I've been very, very happy with it. I, I've seen Thor four times. Really? I yeah. Oh yes. Captain mm -hmm. America, I'm only on three, but mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see. I enjoyed that one as well. So I, I've been a big fan of the movie translations because they're going back to the source material and in a lot of ways capturing the the early charm of the characters in, in a way that the current comics really aren't anymore because the comics have to evolve and grow with their audience and mm -hmm. the audience these days is, has been around for a while they're a little more jaded they're a little more cynical so the stories unfortunately these days tend to go unfortunately in my opinion mm -hmm. tend to go a little darker a little more adult uh, so what I enjoy about the films is that they recapture the fun and the nobility, the, the charm of the characters as originally created by Jack Kirby or Stan Lee or Steve Ditko or Joe Simon and Jack Kirby in Captain America's case. You know, they, they really capture that charm of the characters and, and they're not afraid to be about heroes. I, I thought Green Lantern was, was fun. Mm -hmm. uh, as a film, I'm not sure it... it, it in my humble opinion, I'm not sure it, it served as well as a film as Captain America and Thor. I don't think it hit all the the necessary notes character-wise, and, and it didn't engage me as much as mm. Thor, or Captain America, or the Iron Man films, or something. But that's just my personal opinion. I, you know, I, I like the character Green Lantern. I haven't been following it much lately, mm -hmm. but. The, the real difference between my enjoyment of the films isn't between Marvel and DC. It's between the films and what we're currently doing in the comics because the films themselves are designed to entertain the broadest possible audience. Right. When I first got into the industry, we were still doing that in comics as well. We still had newsstand sales. We still had the spinner racks in stores. Right. And, and you know, and they were ubiquitous. I mean, you had them in... in, in uh, drug stores, you had them in food stores, they were everywhere. So the point when I got into the industry in the 80s was to entertain the broadest audience possible. These days the audience is much more compact and the material itself is much more directed almost to a laser point to mm. entertain the people that have been around for 10, 15, 20 years who, as I said before, are a little more cynical, who are a little, a little more jaded about the comics industry as a whole. So it, it's a different, it's comparing apples and oranges. It's a very different type of material that comics are producing these days. And uh, my writing partner and I, Tom DeFalco, and I, we tend to take the attitude that we can still entertain those people and still entertain the broadest audience possible. So most of the work we try to do, Spider-Girl, the Superman job we just did, we, we try to still keep it as something that would entertain the broadest possible audience, mm -hmm. but to try not to alienate the audience that's there, yeah. that's paying attention. All of these characters are intended to be a franchise because they're, they're serialized characters in their original form, okay? But anything that's franchised, be it Lethal Weapon or James Bond or Indiana Jones, or you, you know that the character's gonna, gonna make it out. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, I agree with Todd completely, that's not the issue. The storytelling is the issue. And uh, how, whether or not you're able to relate to the character, whether or not you're able to go on the ride with the character is always the more compelling issue than whether or not he's going to make it out. I mean, the movies where the hero dies at the end are usually uh, shown to a preview audience and the audience says, wow, that was a real bummer. Yeah. And they reshoot <laughs> the ending where he got out of the building okay. Yeah, you're True. right. I mean, it, you know... And I, I agree with. I also agree with Todd that I think the I think the single biggest reason that these films are being made now and are successful now is three letters CGI. Mm, I mean, computer generated. Yeah. Uh, they can do it. Is, is yeah. They they can finally technology finally caught up 
with the the concepts and the ideas of in the comic books, and they can be done without looking cheesy or cheap or unconvincing. Yeah. I mean, as far back as 78, if you remember the tagline on the original Superman movie, you will believe that a man can fly. Yeah. And <laughs> that was still blue screen back in the day. I yeah, mean, I'm sure kids look at that now and go, he's hanging in front of a screen. <laughs> <laughs> You see the but, wires. You know, as the technology has increased, you've seen more and more of these characters be done. I mean, Green Lantern couldn't have been done, you know, yeah. 10 or 15 years ago as well as it was now. I, fire was a big problem with CGI early on. They finally licked that. They were able to do the Human Torch in yeah. Fantastic Four convincingly. And, uh, I mean, so as the technology grows, even broader, larger, more insane concepts will be seen on the screen, you know. Uh, Personally, one of the things I'm happy about with the new Spider-Man is that they're, go they're going to be doing the effects in a little bit more, bit more of a practical way. A lot of the swinging is going to be done by stuntmen on wire rigs rather than CGI, mm. which, because, again, I'm a dinosaur, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. I, yeah. I enjoy that. I like, I like there being a human being in the suit a little more often than not mm. because I think it works specifically well for the Spider-Man character. Hmm. because Spider-Man has always been a character that has been sold as Peter Parker in a suit. You know, yes. his humanity is a huge part of what's going on with that character. Yes. And him taking his bruises and taking his bumps is always a very uh, important part of that. And you should never lose sight of the fact that it's it's not like, you know, Clark Kent is the disguise and he becomes Superman. It's, it's always Pete, whether he's in right. his costume or in plain clothes. And you should never lose that. And I think the... Uh, the reliance on CGI, you know, although it was very, very hard to tell. The Spider-Man movie was a terrific, uh, first terrific job because he, he had the audience along for the ride. When Pete lets that thief go, yes, uh, you know, That's the, the audience scene is there about. with him. I sat there, knowing how the story unfolds, I sat there and realized the audience is completely on board. They have bought into this, they're with Pete, and boy are they in for a shock coming yeah. up. But I really enjoyed Captain America. I thought Captain America was just fantastic, the most recent one. And uh, I also enjoyed Thor. As, as long as I've been in this industry, I'm still hustling for work. As one job wraps up, mm. I, I love having a regular gig. Spider-Girl was a regular gig that lasted years. I was seven years on The Mighty Thor. As long as your editor is happy and your readers are happy, it's, it's a wonderful experience to have a regular gig where you know where the next job is coming from the next month. <clears throat> These days, I'm going through a period now where I, I don't have a regular assignment. Mm. So as each assignment wraps up, you start making some phone calls and you, you hope somebody has some work that shakes loose for you and everything. And you, seniority in, in most entertainment forms, in, in, in film and in TV, it, it, it off, as so often is the case, it, it's, it's, a, it's an industry where they're looking for the next big thing. They're looking for the, the bright ideas, the, the shiny ideas, and, and that comes from New Blood. So New Blood is constantly, professionally, if not <laughs> in readership, New Blood is constantly coming in the door. And you really do have to kind of fight to keep your niche. If, but, but even during the, that period of time, there was a, uh, it gave the comic industry a bit of an arrogance that, you know, if we produce the material, they will come, mm -hmm. you know, that kind sure. of thing. And it, it, it's not that situation now. With, with the movies making people aware of the characters, mm -hmm. if the characters were as ubiquitous as they were before, if you, could, if you were going to a giant eagle and you just saw the Thor movie and you were at a checkout line and you saw a spinner rack that had a Thor comic on it, you, parents may very well buy it for their kid. Right. Or the kid would go, Mom, 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 Thor, Thor, you know. Yeah. But that's not where they are right now. Yeah. It, it's it's far more of a of a proactive situation that they're requiring of their uh, uh, of their readership. And as I was saying before, at one point Marvel discussed start opening Marvel stores like the Disney stores, like the Warner Brothers stores, right. and things like that. And I have a lot of friends, not just Todd. I have other <laughs> friends who are retailers. And Todd was not part of the conversation at the time. But I had a retailer friend of mine say, "Well, how do you feel about the Marvel stores?" And at that point, I was producing a book in the 90s called Thunderstrike. Mm -hmm. It was selling very, very well. But mm -hmm. what was happening was it would come in on a Wednesday. It would, uh, the new book would come in on a Wednesday. It would sell out by Friday. And they wouldn't reorder it because mm -hmm. the independent retailers are just trying to stay ahead of the Reaper. They're just trying to, to stay one step ahead of their bills. Okay? So to risk ordering more copies... 
and possibly not selling them is something that. that they cannot consider. <laughs> okay, so I was getting three days display time on my monthly periodical from the lion's share of the retailers. And we were still, we were selling very well, but how much better could we have sold if we were getting our four weeks display time? Remember that there is not a right way or a wrong way to write a movie review, but there is a right critic, and that would be me. The name of the show is Outtakes, but you already knew that.